This show is brought to you by Telvor Motorhomes, ARB 4x4 accessories, and proudly supported by Caravan in Queensland. The Capricornia Coast, we're at a sunny little place called Kinka Beach. And what a beach to walk on. Oh. It goes forever and it's nice and flat and the sea's out. We got here early this morning. I went for a run this morning. Oh, are you kidding? I forgot to make you your coffee. <laughs> on tonight's show, I try my hand at pottery making. God help them. I'm going to be visiting hundreds of animals at the Kubri Wildlife Sanctuary and the Karana Croc Farm. And I'm going to pay a visit to the Water Park Eco Tours in Byfield, which I have heard wonderful things about. There is also a great story about a monument that divided a community here called the Singing Ship. Hey, got a lot to do. Good luck. Have a great day. See you, sunshine. All right. Bye. <laughs> but bypassing Rocky for now, we've chosen to head to the Capricorn Coast. It's about 120 kilometres from Gladstone or 650 k's from Brizzy. And my first stop is the Capricorn Caves, also known as the Olsen Caves. Located just 23 kilometres north of Rockhampton, it's easy to find, just turn right off the highway into the Caves Township. Five generations of the Olsen family owned the caves until 1988, when the property was later reclassified to freehold land and is today one of the largest privately owned cave system in Australia. Hello. Hello. <laughs> About 20 kilometres north of Rockhampton, there's something you've got to see. It's a beautiful area. The famous Capricorn Caves. But they weren't always known as that. And in fact, we're fortunate to have Dan Huth, who is the uh, uh, lead adventurer tour guide here at the Capricorn Caves. And we're actually standing in front of the original founder, I think, John, uh, Dan, Mr. John Olson. John Olson, yep. So this is a, a statue of John Olson and his wife sitting here. Um, he actually discovered the caves in 1882. So about 130 years ago now. Australia has about 10,000 known caves, each unique. However, these limestone caves are particularly special because of their elevation above the surrounding plains and their location on the Tropic of Capricorn. Okay, well, we've just come in to the entrance of uh, the actual cave. What, this part here is the vestibule? Yeah, yeah we, we call this bit the vestibule, oh, which is okay. like a French word for entrance or opening. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's why we, we like to call it that. Now, we're not right into it yet, but these are even fantastic. And, you know, I wonder, mate, with uh, movement or earth movement, not that we get earthquakes here, but, I mean, are they ever checked by geologists at all to, for safety reasons? Oh, we, we get a lot of geologists here. We've had, uh, last year actually, um, a professor from the Sydney University and a team from um, Poland and Slovenia come here and they did two weeks of, of research on the rocks in the caves. But uh, like I always say to people, if there was an earthquake, if you're in the middle of the cave, um, it's actually quite safe because it's one big solid block. It, you're actually more likely um, to be in danger if you're on the outside of the cave. These are our cave decorations or cave formations just formed from the water coming down through the limestone, dissolving limestone from up above mm -hmm. and redepositing it as calcite on the floors and the walls and things like that. Mm. And uh, over here, we have some, some stalactites and stalagmites. Uh, there's a few different ways that people remember, <laughs> remember these. You've probably heard a few before. Well, I remember at school, C was like ceiling and M, but there is another way. Yeah, yeah my favourite way is, is the stalactites. They hang on tight to the roof and okay. grow down, and our stalagmites, they might reach the roof one day, so they grow from the floor back up to the roof. Well, that's easy to remember yeah. too. <laughs> I like that one. The Capricorn Caves are one of only three caves with disabled access in Australia. Look over here, we've got uh, the big fig tree root coming through. So that's live. Yep, we're about um, 60 metres 
uh, underneath where the tree is here, and obviously the root keeps going down deeper. Good Lord. But uh, we've got a few nicknames for this one. Most of the guides call it the, the bell rope for ringing the bell in the church <laughs> or the cathedral. In the cathedral, right. Um, I actually like to tell people it's for our grooms to escape when we have the weddings here. <laughs> oh. Wow. <Yeah. laughs> now, we were talking about weddings, but there's a lot more goes on in here, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, as well as our weddings, we have a lot of opera singers come here. We have um, every six months, a company from Brisbane brings up a different set of opera singers and does a weekend of performances. We used to have Christmas carols in the cave every year, and we have a lot of schools bring their bands and orchestras and things like that. Oh, fabulous. But um, I still think the weddings are the most spectacular because they roll out red carpet and put out about 400 candles all the way through our cathedral, so it's oh, all Oh, that would look absolutely absolutely lovely. The surrounding areas are also home to much wildlife. Thanks to the current owners, the Augustans, this wonderful attraction is open to the public and is one of the longest running tourist attractions in Queensland. And what better way to finish up the tour with a nice cup of coffee and a scone? Nothing like it, uh, made Australian scones, jam and cream and a nice cup of coffee after That's an right. exhilarating experience. Yeah. Thank you for sharing with our viewers. Uh, uh, I'm very moved. It's very special. It is indeed. I've been reading about it all my life, but it never got here. Yeah, it's quite beautiful. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for coming, and um, I hope to see a few of your viewers here in the future. We're always open, only closed two days of the year. So That's pretty good. I'm glad you get a day off. Or yeah, day. every now and then. 20 <laughs> kilometres north of Rockhampton, signs everywhere, easy to find, Capricorn yeah. Caves. Yep, yeah, that's right, just off the highway. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. With the amount of suspension products on the market, it can be very difficult to decide which ones to choose, bearing in mind that weight is very critical. Now we have Dean here from ARB and he's going to help us out with those questions. Now Dean, I notice you've got two vehicles here. Yep. Um, how do you decide which is the best suspension for you? It all comes down to really the individual and the, and the owner of the vehicles, uh, what they have in mind for what they want to do for touring. Uh, we've got two totally different vehicles here. We've got a Toyota Land Cruiser 70 Series Ute, a 200 Series Land Cruiser GXL. Both cars behave different on the road depending on what weight you have on the car. Right. The 200 Series, nice and comfy, it drives like a wagon until you put three tonne of caravan behind it, okay. a, bit of, a couple of hundred kilos in the back of the car. Then it might need a little bit of help in the suspension side of it very easily overcome with a good matched suspension system. Now Dean, I noticed you've uh, brought a couple of products to show us today. Yeah. Um, this one intrigues me. That's the Old Man Emu Nitro Charger Sport Shock Absorber. It's the uh, latest Shock Absorber range that uh, Old Man Emu have brought out to their collection. Um, fantastic Shock Absorber, especially when weight's involved. And can you tell me about the coil we've got there? The coil we've got here is out of a, uh, actually out of the back of this 200 series Land Cruiser. This is a um, design to carry around a constant load of 200 kilos on board so this is an ideal spring for a caravaner where you've got maybe might put a set of drawers in the back or a long range fuel tank and 100 or 200 kilos with a ball weight on the caravan. Wow. It really does help hold it up. Probably would only settle that car down about an inch, inch and a half in the back of the car with all that load on there and still handles very well on the road. Back suspension in this cruiser here it's, been, uh, it's, it's a lifted suspension, two inches over standard. Uh, there are constant 600 kilo spring in the back of this car now to carry that, help carry that weight, as well as help and assist with uh, with ride quality. And there's a lot of weight on it at the moment, but it's a bit hard to tell, isn't it? There is, mate. It's it's probably settled the car down about a half an inch, an inch or so. Excellent. And what have you got there? This is a greasable shackle. Uh, this is actually out of a 2005 onwards Hilux. Um, Greasable nipples you fit into here and here just so you can grease and put, pushes grease out through this pin here right. into the neoprene bushes. It just helps with longevity of the, of the life of the bush as well as improves a bit of in comfort in the ride. Okay. Um, one of the things I did notice were these. Yeah. And I noticed this one's got a bit of a hole in it. Yeah, yeah. So surprisingly yeah. these these are actually the cheapest item pretty much on this suspension system on this vehicle. They're a $43 part, you buy them as a pair. They're a, st they're a, um, a stone guard shield for the rear shocks, and if any Land Cruiser owner out there knows, 99% of Land Cruisers, the shock absorbers sit in front of the diff. So to help, to help protect that nut and the thread on the bottom of the shock absorber, that clamps around the bottom, the base of the shock, protects that, that, that nut and the thread on the bottom. After 150,000 k's of driving, we pulled this off a customer's car, you can actually see the imprint of the nut on there. 
it's so, done its job. It's done its job. It saved its. It saved the customer in the in the event that they had an, an incident and they had to remove the shock or do, do services work on the car. They remove this, slide it up, and they can remove the shock absorber with ease. So if that wasn't on there, it would have been a whole lot worse. And that'd be a lot more expensive for the customer. Exactly right. Okay. That's right. Well, Dean, that's really helped make my decision a lot clearer today. Thank you very much for your time. No worries. I hope it has. That's what we're here for. Thank you, and let's take this baby for a test drive. Let's get going. Okay. Thank you. After the break, I get a lesson in pottery making from an expert. And we're being treated to another tasty recipe from Barry and Merrin. Four by four accessories was brought to you by ARB.